what's up guys, Third Impact here, coming at you with the fourth day of the 12 days of anime. Now for this anime moment, I'm actually going to be doing a manga moment. And I'm not just going to be doing a moment, I'm going to be doing a whole series. So for day four, I just want to quickly talk about the series Doro Hedoro. Now this is like, this is the latest uh, volume that I've got in North America, volume 10. And then I also have these ones, and then I've also lent one to three off to my buddy. So, this is a great series. Go buy it, go pick it up right now. Um, this is like a really cool one. I feel like Doro Hidoro is one of those series that not a lot of people talk about. I never really see that many videos or anything on Doro Hidoro. And even though from reading, like, um, there's like the artist of Scott Pilgrim, like the creator of that. Um, and it, I don't know, it has a lot of good quotes inside of the novels, like from people who are endorsing it, but I guess not enough people endorse it because, I don't know, I don't feel like a lot of people know about Doro Hidoro. So, uh, Doro Hidoro, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna bring up the plot description really quick and just read you what the, like, basic plot description is because I always see this description, like, popping up in, like, most, in a lot of the volumes and online, but I always just think it's so funny considering what the series actually is, so. The plot of the manga centers around Kamen, who does not remember who he was before he was transfigured by a magic user. This transformation left him with a reptile's head and a desire to find out the truth about who he really is. Accompanied by Nikaido, or Nikaido, I kind of always mess that one up and I'm not sure 100% I should get that down. His female companion, he tracks down magic users in the hole and unceremoniously chomps down on their heads, hoping to find out who it was that put him in the state? One by one, they witness this second man inside the head of Cayman, and after pulling them back out of his mouth, he asks them all the same question, what did the guy inside my mouth say? So like, I don't know, I remember reading that description at first, like I'm sure many other people did too, because I think that's what's on the back of the first volume and all that, but that like description is such a very small and minor part, like that whole description is like kind of a very basic um, like, description of what his goals are, and like, one action of like, how he chomps down on people's heads and asks, what did the guy inside of my head say? But that's such a minor part of the story. But yeah, like, I know that sounds really weird, but it's, it's a very strange series. Um, they're in this really decrepit, shitty sort of city called Hole, very appropriate name, um, where magic users live outside of this place, but they can get to this place through opening these doors that they can summon out of nowhere and they go around hole and they use the people there for experiments and things so we're under the impression that Cayman was used for one of these experiments and that they turned his human head into a reptile head so when he bites down on people's heads he can see um, the people that he's biting down on can also see somebody inside of his mouth we don't know if that's his original form if that's something else the whole sort of main appealing part of Doro Hodoro, to me at least, is how it layers like mystery on top of mystery on top of mystery. And they're like really big mysteries too, like like characters can die in this series and come back absolutely no problem. The magic in this series is really strong and a lot of characters have really strong weird abilities that can, we, we find out, can have affected things that we didn't realize that they could have affected before. It's a very strange series, and it's one of those ones that, when you're reading it too, like, I would get it quite a ways in, and I would have to look, think back and be like, wait a minute, like, I'd have to go through in my head, like, where are these characters at, what are they doing, because it just has, like, powers and curses and things, but, like, different effects, like, stacking on top of each other and all sorts of weird things happening. And that initial plot that you're introduced to in this world it like really expands very quickly and Q Hayashida, the author, also just quick shout out to Q Hayashida, story and art by, she is quite awesome and I, you know, it uh, shouldn't necessarily be like of note that, oh, she's a female manga cop, but it is pretty cool because this is an extremely like gory and crazy series, very funny, like it, it mixes, uh, that's another one of its strengths, but um, just the fact of how like graphic and crazy that it is at sometimes it's like props to uh q hayashida like i i haven't seen another female manga call that made such a brutal series 
like very very good I, I, I definitely improve but um, yeah beyond that the world building is really cool the way that the whole works the way that all the different characters have such like unique and individual masks how their different magics that they have they work with whatever profession they have in that world and how it works in a weird way and then she has this uh, the author has this way of like writing little in between chapter little stories that also help expand the world and just it'll be like well what about this character what do they do in their daily lives and it'll just have like a couple of pages just like following them around and what they do when you find out a little bit about them so the world building is really cool it very much starts off around the whole with like um, spellcasters being outside of that being like the aggressors but we're quickly sort of um, shown almost equal amounts of the spellcasters to the people that live in the hole and who were once like the enemies of the series kind of become like major characters in the series and it doesn't just focus on Cayman and Nikaido for like much like it they are definitely the major focus of most of the series but Q Hayashida has a great way of really going around and focusing on so many different characters in the series at the same time you can have like 10 different chapters in a row that were like all dealing with completely different characters and she really juggles her page time I guess you would say um, between these characters very well and also the humor in this in this series is just hilarious like this is one of the few manga series that actually makes me like laugh out loud at how ridiculous it is and a lot of times it's the humor is hilarious in and of itself, but it's how she juxtaposes the horror aspects with the comedy aspects. There's such ridiculous, like, black humor and, like, gore used for humor in, in ways that I would have never thought was funny or that I never thought I would have laughed at, but when you see it in how it's portrayed in the show, it's just great, or in this series, I should say. And I'm really hoping that Doro Hidoro gets picked up for an anime adaptation because I think an anime for Doro Hidoro would just be amazing. It would introduce to so many more people and it would 100% be like an extremely successful series. So if you haven't yet, check out the manga Doro Hidoro. And yeah, that's it for the, the for my fourth day of anime for fourth day of manga, I guess you would say. For the 12 days of manga in anime. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace out, and um, yeah, again, it is snowing really hard outside, so I hope you guys are having a nice white Christmas if you're somewhere that can enjoy that. We're definitely going to be having one here this year, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.